Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's RTC TV4 broadcast, where we're bringing you cast and wrestling action in the Super 6 from Cast and High School. I'm Blair Zimmerman, and I'm joined today on the other headset by Drew McGrew, uh, who I roped into helping me out, so <laughs> I don't have to sound stupid by myself. Drew, welcome. Yep. <clears throat> Glad to be here. Now, uh, up until last year, Drew actually wrestled with our incoming freshman grapplers and then came to high school and uh, turns out that wrestling and basketball overlap in high school unlike in junior high so uh, Drew can't wait to watch you when, as you get to the varsity court and I'm glad to have you helping me out here this morning. Thank you. So uh, round one will be getting underway shortly and uh, Kasten's going to be facing off in the first round against the Elwood Panthers. We will be starting as you can see up in the corner of your screen at the 144 weight class. And uh, well, um, do want to wish a get well soon also to Caston's head coach, uh, Mark Evans. Coach Evans came down sick this week and he is not able to be here this morning. Um, coach Wilburn and Coach Duvall stepping up to fill in the gap and uh, coach these coach these cast and grapplers hopefully to some victory today uh, we'll have five rounds of wrestling action and so stay tuned and uh, make sure you keep your refreshments top off and until we get round one underway we are going to step out and we're going to thank our sponsors for allowing us to bring you this broadcast you're watching cast and comments wrestling here on rtc tv4 all right ladies and gentlemen i did see them have captains out on the mat the official saying let's go so Looks like we're going to get underway here. Match one at the 144 weight class. We got Landon Rigney facing off against Elwood's Casey McCray. McCray starting out by backing off and locked up now. He's got that front headlock. Oh, that's a hard position to be in. Rigney works on a sit out. Still working on it. McCray did get those two points for the takedown. Rigney trying to build his base. There's a sit out. Does yeah. get back to his feet. McCray with the mat return though. He's working for that hand control while Rigney's still working to build that base. All he's gonna sink in that half. That's not a good place. Rigney trying to re-roll. Great way of fighting by Rigney. Got the two back points there, oh, and then a reversal two for Rigney. Oh, if he sinks that under his head, he's got him. And he's working on settling that weight. McCray in a bad spot now. He has to post that arm out. Working his way around so he can drop the weight. Unfortunately, he gets off of McCray, but he's got that bundle in. Oh, now he's got that bundled headlock. McCray's in a bad position. Now, one thing Rigney does need to watch is not getting his weight too high to where he yep. gets popped over on his own shoulders. And that will end round one. Three back points to Rigney. Drew, I feel like he should have gotten two sets of back points there. Yeah, I feel like he definitely did. He had him down, he kind of got out of it and then brought him back down at the end. The official did only assign three back points, but that does put Rigney up five to four going into round two. Excuse me, period two. We'll have McCray in referee's position to start the second period. Landon going for a tight waist ankle. Just go to move. Working on those one on ones, getting that head control and hand control. He's sinking a half.
McCray shrimps and then puts his arms in exactly the wrong position to save himself here. He's bridged out. He should have him right here. Not quite getting that shoulder blade down. And that'll be the points of the shoulder. Rigney putting six points on the board. Looks like he may have gotten hit as McCray was trying to get out from under him. Great match by the freshman, Rigney. Coming up next, we've got our 150 weight class. And that'll be uh, Gabe Burkett Raider facing off against Elwood's Elijah Small. Very aggressive from the start. That's something that uh, we've seen out of Gabe a lot this season is that he rarely starts a match with any kind of uh, retreat. He just heads into his lockup, heads into looking for that takedown, and uh, I think that aggression is going to serve him well as he goes in the sport. Yeah. It's, it's really hard to win if you always come at a match from a defensive standpoint. So, uh, competitors out here hand fighting. Raider gets that leg, and they've got each other's leg. Him. Something we've worked on a lot in practice this week is getting that single and then doing something with it. Raider yep. with that. Oh, if he sinks that half. He's working it. Did get three back points. He needs to watch his positioning right here. And we're going to give reversal. two points to a reversal here for Small. Gabe really needs to get up quick. Small now heavy on the head. Raider into a front position. Comes around behind, gets another reversal. Up seven to two as we approach the 30 second mark on the Putting clock. Putting in a half. Just doesn't fully get it in there. Eight. Oh, but oh, he does he get it. the pin with 27.4 left in the first period. Burger Raider taking cast into a 12-0 lead here in round one. Yep. Very quick pin there, but I think it was well deserved. He definitely had both shoulders down. Pretty commanding match too. He yeah. pretty well had had the upper hand that entire matchup. Now at 157, we have Levi Martin facing off against Marcus Rivera. Double leg blast by Levi. One of his go-to moves. Head lever into a chicken wing, another go-to for Martin. Didn't quite get the chicken wing sunk this time. Back to a head lever. Oh, he wrapped the wing up. A lot of pressure in that right shoulder there as he yes. gets him rolled. Rivera able to get back to his knees. Trying to push him over into a cradle here. Smart move by Rivera, grabbing a hold of a leg, preventing that rollover. Martin maintaining control though in this top position. Oh, and he runs it right around him. He's stuck, there's no way he's getting out. And there it is. Senior Levi Martin putting six points on the board for the Comets. That was such a tight move. There was no way of getting any room to breathe out of that. No. Levi is so quick. It takes a lot of skill or quite a lot of weight advantage. Yes. As I watch him 
uh, when the guys are doing King of the Ring, he'll go up several weight classes just getting pin after pin. Next up, we got another senior, Liam Wilburn. And facing off against Brylon Mort. Locked up, not able to do anything. Wilburn will disengage. Go back for the head control. Oh, he's got his head under. Under hook pop there it right by. Back out. Mort not able to do anything with that underhook. Good hand fighting there by Wilburn. Mort goes for the duck under, not able to do anything. Does get the double. The double. Mort will get the two point takedown there. Wilburn trying to build his base, just trying to find a way to get out of here. Good roll there by Wilburn. Didn't get stacked onto his shoulders. And Liam was sick this week, so I know he's still recovering from that. And uh, what's been going around has been pretty rough, so. He is towards his shoulders, though. Wilburn fighting, but Mort might have him here. Wilburn's got that arm stuck. He really needs to get that arm out so that he can roll and escape. He just needs to, you know. Yeah, and that will put the points of the shoulders down. Brylon Mort putting the first points on the board for Elwood in this round. Next up at 75, or excuse me, 175. Probably shouldn't use shorthand. Uh, we've got Kane Finke facing off against Christian Rivera. Finke with the leg. Got a little lucky with that one. Yeah, way, way to take advantage of that head snap. Uh, Rivera not able to control it. Yep. Left himself open. Finky dives for that leg and gets the two points for the takedown. Trying to wrap up a cradle. Loses control of it as he's trying to flip sides. Rivera... Working to get that ankle free. And he may, I think he's going to end up behind. He'll get, the official hasn't given him the two points in the reversal yet. There's the two points. Finky's still trying hard to get out of that. Yeah, Finky in a bad spot here. Rivera has him bundled. Yep. It's a lot of pressure to be trying to twist against. Even though that's a legal move, sometimes it just it feels like you're getting choked and you can't do anything about it. Every now and again, there will be enough shoulder pressure that you'll see an official call it, give a caution for an unsafe procedure, but... As you said, fully legal move there, and it does finally wear Finky down with only 18 seconds left in the period. Gaston still ahead with an 18 to 12 advantage as we move towards the 190 weight class. At 190, we'll have senior Pete Duvall facing off against Elwood's Johnny Neese. Duvall just having a phenomenal season this year. And of course, Pete will join me as we broadcast this evening's boys varsity basketball matchup against Frontier. 
Duvall going in for that leg. Can't quite get a hold of it. Very aggressive from the rip. Good underhook there. Duvall not been awarded two points on the takedown yet, but he certainly he's has knees right stacked now. up. Yeah. Yep. Don't need the takedown points when you win by pinfall with less than 30 seconds gone in the first period. Very Great. commanding match from him. Senior never looked back after he got that. Next up at 215, we have Case Castens? No, Castens Brody Brewer <laughs> facing off against Gage Benton. <coughs> Brewer, one of those incoming freshmen who added quite a lot of height over the summer. And he's really kind of not lost track of how to how to do what he wants to do with that height. Brewer and Benton locked up in the middle. We're starting to, starting to get into a lot of big man wrestling, a lot of locking up. Not a lot of shots going. But that's something Brewer can do. I've seen him do it a lot in the wrestling room. He absolutely can take a shot. And something we've been trying to work on is getting them to do some head bobbing. Yeah. And then as their opponent gets used to fighting up, Bob let go. Let the opponent go up and just leave his legs open. Brewer with the sprawl there. <laughs> and I hear the cast and coaching staff yelling head pressure. <laughs> Two points to uh, Benton. As he Brewer won. stands up. Trying to get the escape. Unfortunately, went back down as he broke those hands. 20 seconds left in the first period. Solid mat return there by Benton. He's working on that cross face. And first period comes to a close here. Kasten defers. Elwood chooses neutral to start the second. Competitors again locking up in the middle. Good knee tap there by Brewer. Didn't have the opening for the shot. Both guys fighting for some hand control here. Brewer comes inside. Not able to get his hand free, though, to go for a leg. Neither wrestler out here able to take a commanding advantage. Match so far being won by Benton with just a 2-0 advantage. Brewer can take a shot and tie it up as we 
start wrapping up the second period. Just 15 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, really just been a lot of the same thing here. Just trying to get head control. No points on the board in the second period. And period three will also start in neutral. Brewer desperately needing to get some points on the board if he doesn't want to give up a minor decision here. Kasten does have that 12 point cushion, but you never yep. want to intentionally cut into it. Yeah, I think around this minute mark, Brewer should start looking for shots on the ground and going for his penetration steps. What interests me is seeing Brody in practice. He's absolutely somebody who can be a low to the mat wrestler and take those shots from almost a three point stance. Yep. And we don't we don't tend to see that in Over his wrap, matches. Wraps up the leg, turns into him, and loses control of it. Two more points then to Benton, but he will get called for an illegal procedure as he locks his hands on the mat. Does give up one point there. And Coach Duvall was signaling the official that he thought he saw that in back in round one, or again, period one. They'll reset with Brewer in referee's position. Brewer needs to explode and he got out. it. Definitely got, should have been given the escape points. Wasn't quite able to take control on the map though. He has 30 seconds, he really needs to work that. Oh, he let go of the leg. Fifteen seconds left in this match. Benton trying for a half. And the match will conclude with Elwood's uh, Gage Benton winning by minor decision. That'll put three points on the board for Elwood. Luke Hipsher will step out and take a round one forfeit, putting six points on for the Comets. As we head around to the bottom of the weight classes. I think this will be a lot of forfeits. One of, help. 106 is a double forfeit here today. 113 will go to Caston's Jackson Robbins on forfeit. And then we will come to the 120 weight class where Caston's Gage Muneer faces off against Elwood's Caden Simpson. Again, another freshman stepping up to the plate. I know he's wrestled most of his life. Big sprawl there by Muneer as Simpson went for the leg. 
Another good sprawl. Not quite able to get around behind and get those two points. Gets a leg out of that. Still working to gain control. There he gets his two points. He needs to work back behind him. Manier really needs to explode. Simpson with that leg in between Manier's. Makes it very difficult for an escape. Oh, he's working on sinking the splatle yeah. there. You could see he was setting that up from easily 30 seconds back ever since he gained control. Manier in a tough spot because with no leg available, he can't donkey kick out of it. He's wrapped into a tight bundle. Just not in a good position here for the freshman. And that yep. will be the pin going to Caden Simpson. Next up at 126, we have, uh, excuse me, uh, Ashton Boyer facing off against Jaden McPherson. Well, that was the scheduled bout. But it looks as though McPherson was not uh, on the mat to wrestle. And then we have a forfeit at the 133 weight class. Uh, going to Elwood. Or excuse me, 132, I guess. And now we will wrap up round one for Caston at the 138 weight class where we will have Miles Sherrick faced off against Elwood's Aiden Mort. I believe this is just Sherrick's second season wrestling, isn't it? Yes, sir, it so sure is. He, he's definitely still working on uh, learning the ins and outs of the sport, but he's come a long way. I know he was a, a aggressive, eager wrestler yeah. in his eighth grade year. Yeah, last year he'd really just try to make something. He'd backyard wrestling, kind of roll on his back, not really know what to do. This year he took the time learning some moves, figuring out how to set up his opponent. And a big part of getting good at anything is just being willing to get out there and do it, mm -hmm. even when you're wrong, and just fail until you win. Sherrick with the duck under, gets a hold of that leg. Not quite able to take Mort down with it, but he's got those legs. Mort now sprawling out. Tries to get behind Sherrick. Does get Sherrick down on the mat. No one with Sherrick now has both legs lift him up. Trying for the trip. Oh, there wraps he... it. That does not work in his favor completely. Neither opponent with distinct control yet. Oh, nope. We, we do have two points awarded to uh, Mort. Sherrick now trying to get that escape, but Mort with that tight waist. That seatbelt hold can be difficult to escape from. So important to keep that tight. And Mort with that leg in between, 
Sherrick oh, rolls over. Nearly able to get more on his back, more able to continue the roll. 10 seconds left here in the first period as Mort gets that leg control. Had a half in and he gave it up. And that will conclude round one or period one. Period two starts with Mort in referee's position. Sherrick goes for the tight waist ankle, gets it, breaks him down, going for a head lever. Mort trying to build that base as Sherrick jumps sides. Goes for a post the leg. Oh, he gets caught behind. Oh. Good move there, sweeping his opponent's legs out. The one thing he didn't do is keep those legs hooked in to keep um, Mort's legs off the mat. And Mort able to start working on building that base as Sherrick tries to spiral him down. He's got the cross face and the inside hip control. Mort now bellied down on the mat. Sherrick goes for the one on one. He's got two on one, rolled it in. If Sherrick can get that uh, right hand free, he's in a good position to bundle him more up. Switches sides. Keeps on rolling him in. Moore tries to stand up. Sherrick with a mat return, but he does end up with his head in a bad place. Another mat return. Gives up two on that. Though Sherrick had control for the lion's share of the second period, he still wasn't able to put any points on the board. As we're coming to the 10 second mark in period two, more up for nothing in this match. And, and that'll end period two. And the opponents will start period three in neutral position. Oh, he got caught. Trying to fix his headgear. He's cradled up. This could be really bad for Sherrick. Oh, rolls him around. Gets Good him on his roll. back. Tries to sink the half, the reverse half. He's got the leg hooked. He rolled right into Sherrick exactly where he wants him. Sherrick needs to settle his weight. Uh, does get three back points there. Oh, Mort propped that leg out. Sherrick missed a good opportunity for a side cradle. Nearly flips him around again. And Sherrick falls to pinfall with just 44 seconds left in the match. So that'll put our final score in round one at Caston 42, Elwood 27. And as we wait for the other mats to finish up, we're gonna step away, we're gonna thank our sponsors.
Come back for round two action here at the Cast and Super Six. You're watching Cast and Wrestling here on RTC TV4.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that will wrap up round one here at the commentary. We are going to uh, take a break as the teams have their mandatory uh, recovery period in between the rounds. And we will be back for round two. Where Paston will be facing off against Manchester. We'll give you a little bit of a preview there as we finish out round one with the remaining matches from Manchester and North Miami. We are going to step away. So thank you to those businesses that support our ability to bring you this broadcast. We'll be back after a while. This is Paston Wrestling here on RPC TV4. Alright, and after some te technical difficulties, we're back getting underway here, round two in the 150 pound weight class. We have Gabe Burke at Raider facing off against Jose Cortez. <laughs> Cortez with a takedown, giving up the escape points there. Cortez with that double leg. He's really just doing anything he wants right now. Very commanding wrestler. Yeah, this unfortunately looks to be an instance of the more experienced wrestler just using it as a, an opportunity to practice takedowns and just build yep. points. Double leg tilt there. Still got both of those legs laced up. Brought him back in bounds just to Looks like finish the job. Working on a pinning combination here. Got the wing in and he sunk it. Stacked him up, pins him. Manchester coming out with a six point lead here. Next up at 157, Levi Martin facing off against Isaiah Burlingame. And fighting there in the center. Martin goes for that leg. Can't quite get it. Fairly evenly matched competitors here, but Martin making more movements out on the mat. He needs to set his shot up more. Burling game able to sprawl out from that one. Got the sprawl in with an underhook. Martin able to get back to his feet. Burling game could have made some advances off of that sprawl with some uh, head pressure on it. Single leg by Martin. Good head pressure. Got Burlingame pogoing him, trips him, takes him down. 
Referee still hasn't singled the two points yet. There's the just got it. Another out of bounds. Martin looked to be uh, trying to get a splatel going. Martin looking to go for that head pressure wing combination. He's got the wing all wrapped up. She got to break him down and then go right over his head. And that takes period one to a conclusion. Martin winning this one two nothing so far. Game starts in second or uh, period two in the referee's position. Trying to work to his feet. Martin keeping his head in his armpit. Hooking the wing up right there. Burlingame trying to roll the whole stack, not able to get it done. Does get his arm out of that chicken wing, though. Martin's still in control of the match right now. And we will have an escape. Two points, Manchester. Good takedown, caught him off guard. Looked like he was working to sink that power half. Puts a leg in. Something we were noticing uh, in round one as we watched Manchester's conclusion is that uh, Manchester does a lot of putting two legs in. He's just going to ride him out for the rest of this period. Three points on that near fall. Does give Burlingame a 6-2 advantage with 25 seconds left in the period. Martin sits out, not able to escape with it though. 18 seconds left in the period. Burling game. Putting in that bundle. Working it towards a cradle. He's got five seconds to get it connected. Martin able to prevent that. And that will finish the period. Manchester goes into period three with a four point advantage. Start off in neutral here. <laughs> Levi able to roll him back around. Gets two points on that reversal. Martin really needs to get some back points to tie up or take the lead in this match. Yeah, 
gives a reversal. And another reversal by Marm. Or not signaled yet. There's the there there's go. the reversal points. Forty seconds for somebody to get a pin or Martin to put some points on the board. And they will go out of bounds. Referee's not going to give the reversal points. Burlingame tries to sit out. Martin with that tight waist ankle. He's got 25 seconds. Really needs to make a move right here. At this point, it's all or nothing. 15 seconds. Burlingame sprawls. I think he's going to get that escape point. Oh, he go, he's going for the bundle. He's got the hit front cradle on. Gets the two-point reversal. And the match will end going by minor decision to Manchester. And that will give Manchester a nine-point advantage in this round. Two very experienced wrestlers right there. Next up, 165, we've got Liam Wilburn facing off against Brian Fields. Yeah, Wilburn with headlock. that headlock. He needs to watch himself about getting re-rolled. At this point, he just needs to let go and get behind him. Fields gets a hold of that leg. Wilburn working on getting a hold of an ankle. Wilburn now finds himself in bottom position. Fields now with six points on the board. Had his reversal, he had a near fall. Now cradles Wilburn, working on locking up those legs, prevent Wilburn from scrambling, and he gets the pin. Manchester up now 15-0 in this round. Next up at 175, Kane Finke will be facing Peyton Neal. Just incredibly different builds for these two competitors, Joe. Yep. Kane needs to watch his head level right here. He's too far up. It's going to be an easy shot in the legs. Walks up Neil. Neil just taking command of this match. Gets the takedown. Very close to a pin here. I think he's so far able to fight it, but there was the pin. Yep. <clears throat> Next up at 190, Pete Duvall will be facing off against Ryder Faust, looking to break the goose egg that Caston's sitting at here in round two.
both guys uh, going for head control. Got a quick bob. Duvall able to get behind. Gets his two point takedown. Yep, very good slide by. Duvall with that head pressure. Rolls him right on the side. Yeah, and he, he, if he gets him rolled onto his back, he's already got him bundled. Works back around. Stack him up. Still not quite able to get him back toward the mat. He's got a wing and a reverse half in. Faust still fighting, but it's starting to look pretty inevitable. If he switches his reverse half to a regular half, he'd have him right down. There'd be no breathing room, like he's doing right now. Faust trying to roll out of it. He's just rolling his shoulder blades ever closer to the mat, burning a lot of energy. Big bridge, oh. but there's the pin. Minute and 10 seconds gone. Pete Duvall putting the first points on the board for Kasten here in round two. And next up at 215, Brody Brewer facing off against Preston Duffy. We talked about this off air in round one. That Duffy just yeah. a very lean competitor at that 215 weight class. Brewer gives up a shot to Duffy. Duffy puts him on the mat. Brewer able to belly down, but Duffy gets that half. Brewer trying to bridge, but he's got all of Duffy's weight. Duffy yeah. will take that pin. Next up, Luke Hipscher coming in for the heavyweight. Looks like we got another forfeit. And he will take six points on that forfeit. Hey, right now, Hipscher is perfect. He might not have wrestled, but forfeits <laughs> are just as good. Tell you what, those six points were sorely needed by the Comets in this round. Definitely. Next up at 113, we'll have Jackson Robbins facing off against Manchester's Rex Moore. Robbins, typically a high energy wrestler. Oh, got Moore caught. gets that double leg. I caught quickly on that. Robbins trying to get a hold of Moore. He just get his head out of the middle and just go for one leg. Rolls around, he needs to get behind him for two. Gets re-rolled. Moore's takedown still the only two points on the board. 30 seconds gone in the first. <laughs> Robin's trying to build that base. Moore getting a leg in between, sprawls him out. Legs in. Yep. We've been seeing that a lot here. Especially by this Manchester team. Yeah, Coach Wilburn used me as the demonstration dummy for that sprawl, and it, it hurts. Moore not quite able to get Jackson enough on his back. Oh, I stand corrected. He did get two back points there. Strong bridge there by, oh man, by Mo Robbins. He managed to get the one point escape, but as he was working his way around behind, pulled the match enough out of bounds that he did not get his reversal points. Yeah. 
Moore will get two more points on another takedown. Moore trying to stack Robbins up. We got 15 seconds left in the period. Moore working on locking up that cradle. A very technical wrestler right here. I feel like that's probably high praise coming from you as uh, Coach Evans said you were one of the most technical wrestlers he ever watched. Going into period two, Moore up six to one over Robbins. Moore will start in referee's position. Robbins with that tight waist ankle, but Moore able to flip around and get a, get a hold of Robbins' legs. Not got enough behind to get the reversal points. But there will be the two points on that reversal. Moore now just one point away from taking the points into a major decision bracket. He has Robbins on his back. Robbins bridging out. Moore working to settle his weight. Very strong bridge. That is a substantial bridge. Well, that's a lot on the neck right there. A lot on the neck. Yeah, that, as it went to the forehead, that was, ooh. I think I heard my neck crunch from that. <laughs> With those back points though, Moore puts himself with a 10 point advantage. Now just five points away from getting a tech fall. Moore snaps Robbins quickly down to the mat. He goes for the one on ones. Trying to get that half. Robbins reaches up and peels it away. Robbins really needs to go quick even though he has another period. Uh, Moore has both arms hooked. We may be looking at a pin here. 25 seconds left in the period. Yep. Impressive technical wrestling there by Manchester's Rex Moore. And that will bring us to the 120 weight class. Gage Manier will be facing Jordan Owens. And uh, the competitors have grabbed the wrong ankle bands. I don't know if there's the referee calling it. <laughs> there's always one, there's always one. Aggressive head bobs there by Owens. Yep. <laughs> Owens getting the takedown points. Very good job popping those elbows, leaving him exposed. Keeps breaking down that left arm. Manier trying to swim the arms free. Left himself wide open for half.
that Owen, hey, Owen's got his arm in there. Yeah. He's just not snaking it around. There, there it is. He finally realized it. A little too late, though. Maneer needs to get that arm off the Owen's head, push it through. Yeah, he's, he... Right now, he's pinning himself. And there's the pin. And I think that might have put victory in round two just out of reach for the Comets. Yep, looks just like it. Yeah, if, if the Comets take six points in each of the divisions that we have wrestlers, or each of the classes we have wrestlers for, that's still just going to take them to 30. And I don't remember, I believe that Ashton Boyer is going to take a forfeit here. Caston doesn't have a 32, but I don't think that... Manchester does either. I don't I don't have down a 38 for Manchester, so I believe that Sherrick will take a forfeit there. And then at 44. At 144, we'll have Landon Rigney versus Talon Selig. I just saw Coach Duvall going to the locker room with, uh, or over to the trainer with Gage Muneer, so I'm not sure, not sure if there's an injury or what's, what's happening there. I do see all of the coaches and the official at the scorer's bench. A lot of conversation happening there. Mm -hmm. This is where it's hard not to have your head coach here where you can know everything that's going on because right now we have assistant talking. I mean, he knows what he's talking about. But it's just different. Well, and I certainly hope there wasn't anything unsportsman or something that happened there. We, I guess we'll see if uh, any points disappear off of the board for anybody. As aggressive as that match was, I have a feeling it has more to do with probably blood or something. Very long conversation here. Points have been awarded on the board for Boyer's forfeit. There's Sherrick coming up for 138. But I do see... Oh, no. Nope. Okay. So I say, I saw a Manchester competitor. That I think that's the 144. Yep. So there's Sherrick with a forfeit. And then here's our 144 match. Landon Rigby versus Talon Selleck. And Selleck just, there's something in his stance that I have a feeling that he is the more experienced wrestler here. Yeah, the name Selleck, I know. Very um, good name from Manchester. Name you hear a lot in sports. Competitors locking up. No clear advantage so far. 
Selick though with that shot. Rigney sprawling hard. Sinking in that bundle. Still not able to get around that leg. He really needs to. He almost needs to go the other two. way and work on a half from that bundle. Selick catches him though, doesn't give up any points. And they are back to looking for control. Rigney goes for that shot. Selick sprawls. Goes for a side along, but Rigney stops it with a headlock. Rigney needs to watch his weight. Because easy re-roll with these headlocks. Selick does come behind him. Still not all the way around, though, for those two points. Yeah, Brigney still has that leg. Selick looking to try to stack him. Brigney keeping that leg, though, trying to prevent that. And there's the two points as Selick makes his way all the way behind Brigney. 32 seconds left in the period. No back points awarded there. Rigney trying to build his base as Selick works to sink that half. Does get him on his back. Rigney not able to roll out of that. He's in trouble. And there's the pin. Rigney just three seconds away from being saved by the bell. Doesn't quite make it happen. So that's going to wrap up round two. Round two on mat two does go to Manchester over Caston, 45-24. And it looks like we have just a few matches left over on mat one uh, with North Miami versus North White. Uh, North White will be moving to mat two with Caston next round. So we're going to swing the camera and go to the crowd mic.
that pin will conclude round two here today. We're going to take a break and thank our sponsors. We'll be back in just about five minutes for round three action. Where Aston will be faced off against North White. Stay tuned for more fast wrestling. You're watching it here on RPC TV4.
Drew, you want to talk about technical difficulties? <laughs> Your uh, co-commentator is technically an idiot, and we've been muted this entire round. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you back. I assure That's you we had crazy. some great, insightful commentary that you've missed out on. Uh, that would be my fault. All right, Rigney now is very close to a tech fall. It's all or nothing right here for Rigney. He's got a minute to work on him. He can't let up anything. He's brought that lead to under double digits. Diana spoke too soon. There's the two-point reversal. 13-point lead now goes to, and there's a oh, pinfall. With just 44 seconds left in the match. Next up at 150, we've got Gabe Burkett Raider going to be facing off against Daniel Yumana. Raider has a leg. Again, very aggressive from the start. And able to get that takedown. Yumana fighting, but Burger Raider. Yep. This looks like a pin. There it is. Wow. And that Great will end by round him. two in a tie. At this point, though, I think it's going to go to points, and I believe North White had more points, mm -hmm. more personal points accrued. Yep. Uh, regardless, though, congrats to the comments for bringing that one back to a tie. Uh, as they started the round, I believe it was 18 points in the hole. Uh, so well fought for the comments, well fought for the Vikings. Uh, we're going to go ahead and swing the camera over and look at the last couple of matches over on Matt 1, uh, which is North Miami versus Michigan City. North Miami will be moving to Matt 2 for the next round.
right, that's going to conclude round three here at the Super Six. I'm not sure whether this is the long break or not, but regardless, we are going to take a break. We're going to thank our sponsors for letting us bring you this, and uh, we'll be back with some more wrestling as uh, we go into round four, North Miami versus Caston. Looking forward to some more great wrestling. And North Miami has just an absolute behemoth of a mm -hmm. roster, so we will definitely get as many matches as Caston can field wrestlers for. So regardless, we'll be back after a while. You're watching the Caston Super 6 here on RTC TV 4. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And I remember to unmute the mics at the <laughs> beginning of the round this time. Starting off round four against North Miami, we have William Wilburn facing off against Jordan Simon. Simon quick on that shot. Working the two on ones, trying to roll the wrist in. Wilburn able to get his hands free. Trying to get to his feet. Simon's had that inside thigh control. Simon's now working that half. Wilburn got lucky. Referee said they were out of bounds. It's interesting to see the difference in different officials and how yep. they call out of bounds. For some officials, it looks like if you have the a single toe still in bounds, mm -hmm. they're going to let it go. Yep. Wilburn in, rolls over on his back. It looked like he was trying for a hard roll. Simon's able to stop it. Yeah, he got caught in the action. Oh, yeah. that was really quick. I think both shoulders were down, but it was a really quick decision. And lost a team point from an unsportsmanlike penalty by Wilburn. Not something you like to see happen. Especially from a senior. And especially given how sportsmanship oriented the IHSAA is. Yep. Uh, it can it can really be bad for a school to have it in those those uh, negative marks. Yep. And just as casting in general, yeah, you know, that's not anything we're right for. Finky now will be facing off against, we got to look at the right roster, we got a lot. Uh, John Tolles, or Tolles? I think it's Tolles. Finky and Tolles locked up. Tolls with that headlock. Pinky trying to pull on that leg. Pinky got Start. a hold of the leg. Tolls with the head pressure. Starting to stand up with it. 
He gets rolled to his back. Kane able to roll that around or Finky. Got those uh, two reversal points. He needs to get that leg back and out of there. He's not going to be able to pull him back with him. Called stalemate there, which is a very good call for Finky because he was going to lose that positioning. Finky there needs a hard mat return. He's trying for it. He's not getting Tolls off his feet, though. Tolls will get the escape point. Coming down to 10 seconds left in the period. Both hip to hip, no points yet. And barely lucked out of that one. Think he's saved by the buzzer. They'll start second period in neutral. Locked up. Finky going for those head snaps. Going really aggressive at the head. Needs to get that leg back and get a good sprawl and he'd be good to go. He needs to get sprawl. a sprawl and then move his weight to the yep. head. He could still kick that leg out. I think we're gonna end up with him giving up two points. There they are. Yep. Kane in trouble now, and there's the pin. pin. Yep. Now at 190, we have Pete Duvall facing off against Hartley Hoover, who's wrestling up from 175. Okay, I was about to say, that's a really lean 190 right there. My guess is that Hoover was the more experienced between Hoover and Toll, so he wrestled up. Does get around and get those two points. Duvall building his base. Hoover with that leg hooked in, making it very difficult for Duvall to have an opportunity. Working that half. Duvall struggling to stay belly down. Duvall works on the re-roll. Faces him. No escape points, though. Mm. And amazingly, the ref hasn't called this out of bounds yet. There's the out of bounds call. Three back points given to Hoover. Duvall able to prop that leg, sits out. Gets one on the board. Now reset, he's looking for the shot. In spite of his height, Hoover does a really good job of guarding those legs. Hoover with the double. Duvall almost able to catch a leg there. Instead gives up two. Duvall now fighting that hand control. There's the power half. 
Duvall fighting against it. So much pressure on that shoulder there. And that will end period two. Duvall down seven to one. Caston still scoreless in this round against this North Miami team. Caston defers. North Miami calls for top to start the third. Duvall oh, caught the ankle right there. Duvall is very quick with those sit outs too. So it was great premonition there by Hoover. Hoover's got him hooked, working him into a pinning combination. He's got this it. This could be it. And Pete Duvall, his first loss of the day here in round four. North Miami now up uh, three pins to nothing, 18 nothing lead here. As we go into 215 where Brody Brewer will be facing off against Logan Smith. Here fighting for some control. Both working really heavy on the head. Locked up again. No clear control yet. Brewer trying to create some separation so he can use his speed against his opponent. Both fighting for that inside control. Smith with the only shot attempt so far this match with over a minute gone. Brewer drops his level, tries to get a leg, can't see if he, he didn't end up getting it. Smith now coming behind, getting those two points, first points of the match. Got around 10 seconds to just survive here. Maybe get one out of it. Smith has that inside thigh. Very difficult to get an escape. And that will wrap up period one. Brewer starts on top. He's going for that far ankle. Switches sides. Switches again. Let's his opponent stand up and face him. Gives away one. Smith now with 3 nothing lead in this match. tied up for quite a long time now. And even though it looks like there's not a lot going on, I guarantee you that those guys are getting worn out. Oh yeah. Brewer aggressively in after the head. Lots of head pressure. He could switch that up to the top and just get a front headlock right there. I don't know if he saw it. He's 
got his opponent's head so low. Smith with that knee tap, not able to do anything with it. Under 30 seconds left in the second period. Locking up again as period two comes to a close. Caston chooses neutral to start period three. At this point, it's all about conditioning. Because it might not look like they're wrestling for such a long time, but yeah, there's man, so much you. energy being takes it out of you. It being used up in those big lockups. I've worked with Brody a little bit in the mat room, and he's strong. Mm -hmm. And that's just a lot of pressure and torque as both opponents are really trying to gain control. So there's a lot of, of, of flexing and clinching going on through the lower back as each party's trying to torque mm -hmm. over, trying to get head snaps. And you, you can't see that on the screen. You can't see that from where we're sitting, but I guarantee you those guys are getting gassed. 100%. Closing in on a minute here. Brewer's got to get going. He's down by five points now as he just gave up control. He needs to be explosive right here. Smith's done a great job of reading uh, Brewer's sit-out attempt. So there's a good sit-out. Catches the leg. At this point, he just needs to... Do he anything. To, he needs to get up and he needed to break that hold before standing up. Now, now he's in trouble. Going for the ankle, he ends up on his back. Now he's bellied down. Under a minute left. Smith now in a commanding position. Brewer needs to build that base and get going. Brewer sits out. Smith able to underhook and stay with him. Under 30 seconds left in the match now. At this point, he just needs a last second attempt. Five points to grab in 10 seconds, though. That's, you yep. know, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to go to, he does get an A point. He needs to shoot now. He ain't got it. All right, and on minor decision, three points will go to North Miami. Now at heavyweight, Luke Hipscher facing off against Cameron Wan. Just the size disparity is so obvious. Yep. I didn't. I should have actually looked at the weigh-in sheets, but Juan has to be definitely at the upper end of that heavyweight oh, easily. class. And you can see it. And he's just using that extra 80, 90 pounds absolutely to his advantage. He locks in that power half and gets Hipsher on his back. Hipsher There's not much struggling to try to roll. He can try to bridge all he wants, so that's yeah. a lot more weight. Juan's weight is settled. Back on his toes. And there's the pin. I guarantee you, though, that 37 seconds, though, that he just fought were a harder 37 seconds than most of us mm -hmm. are going to have in our entire day. Yep. All right, dropping back around, we're a double forfeit at 106. So at 113, we have Jackson Robbins facing off against Braylon McIntyre. Yeah. 
Locked up like a couple of heavyweights. McIntyre th throws Robbins by, though, gets those two points. He got that leg hooked. Robbins is a little sprawled out as he was trying to get that leg free for the escape. McIntyre going for that front cradle. Abandons that, starts working the other direction. Robbins still trying to get to his feet. Yep. Just trying to build that base and get going. McIntyre doing a good job of being basically everywhere at once, so he, he, Robbins has nothing to go with. Robbins now had, he had a quick opportunity as McIntyre did the very dangerous tact of rolling your opponent over yourself. Robbins now working hard to belly back down. Heavy head pressure there as Jackson's still trying to escape. They go out of bounds. I don't know that we're gonna have any points awarded there. Nope. Jackson needs to watch this going straight out of bounds. You can't afford to give up another point through stalling. Set out attempt, unsuccessful as he wasn't able to get to his feet. Finally on his feet, now he needs to break those handholds. Good Matt return. But right on his neck. That hurts so much. Referee resets him for potentially unsafe. Robin's not able to sit out this time as McIntyre goes for the look like a head lever at first. Now he's trying to run the chicken wing. And that'll wrap up the first period of this 113 weight division here in fourth round. McIntyre with a 5-0 lead over Robbins. Robbins will start this round on top. Oh, and he made a bad mistake right there. McIntyre working his way back around behind. Looks like he might not even try for the reversal. He just goes straight for the pinning combination. McIntyre has that bottom arm pin. It's free now, but I don't know that Robbins is going to be able to do anything with it. McIntyre has that leg hook, that far leg hooked, so that Robbins really not able to bridge out of this very well. Mm -hmm. Three back points awarded. I'm not fully certain what's going on. Official over at the scorer's table. I'm not sure what the conversation here is. <clears throat> McIntyre though with a 10-0 lead in this room, in this match. Caution issued McIntyre for starting too soon. Robbins trying to get to his feet and build a base. McIntyre just not having any of it this match. Coming down to a minute now. Robbins really needs to get going. Down 10. Robbins to his feet, not able to disengage. 
McIntyre uses the scramble to get Robbins on his back. 33 seconds left in the period. Three back points awarded. Robbins really needs to chip away at this point deficit. Very quickly too. You can't afford to give up too many back points. Uh, it's over now. Yep. Pin or no. There's two back points and that is now a tech fall. McIntyre putting five points on the scoreboard for North Miami. Next up at 120, we've got Riley Collins will be facing off against Gage Muneer. And then at 126, we will have Jordan Correct, another former Comet, mm -hmm. wrestling up from the 120 weight class. Collins quick to lock up Maneer. Maneer sprawling out though. Working his way behind, he'll get the two points. Puts in the cross face, gives it up and goes for the ankle. Going for that tight waist ankle, trying to break down his opponent. That sit out. to get behind him. Not cross successful. Face and, get and there's the escape point given. Good sprawl by Muneer. Needs to cross face and get that hand off of him. Two more points, Muneer. He's got that tight waist ankle. Working on breaking down those arms. Going to a head lever. My shoulders hurt just watching. <laughs> just watching some of this happen. Yeah, sometimes you don't think your body can move that way. <laughs> and then once you're out of it, you wish that your body would not have <laughs> been moved that way. You hope. <laughs> but you're trying to break Collins down, get him full on his belly. So far unsuccessful. Going for a far knee, far ankle. Doesn't get it. Gets a tight waist ankle and good. Managed to prevent Collins from building a base thus far. Good pressure. He needs to get his forehead on the back of his head. Get it, get it on the mat. Yeah, letting your opponent get his head up off the mat really limits what you're able to do. Maneer doing a good job of it there is... He comes back to work on his opponent for being on the knees. That will wrap up period one. Maneer up four to one as the Comets are still scoreless in this round. Speaking of score, uh, round three did end up in a 36-36 tie against Manchester. I was able to... Uh, go down and talk at the scorer's bench. That was what the uh, powwow with the officials was. Mm -hmm. They were going through the rule book trying to determine uh, who actually won it. It ended up going down to criteria I. Wow. So uh, I think, what is that, 11 in, 8 in, something yeah, like that. Um, before yeah, the, the round finally went to Manchester by one point. So congrats to the comments for such nope. a close match when especially again when they started I think 18 to nothing yep. at that round uh, I think the criteria was that uh, North White scored the most first points that makes they scored sense. more than us that led to them getting the lead Maneer now was he had the full or the half Nelson, excuse me, full Nelson's an illegal procedure. Gave it up, now going for the head lever on the opposite side. Oh 
Trying to work two on one here. Twenty-five seconds left in this period. So far, no points on the board in the period. Now ten seconds left. Near trying to get Collins rolled. Collins back to his knees. And that wraps up period two. Going to start period three in neutral position. Maneer getting pulled forward, putting a leg forward, trying to stop it. Collins definitely going to try to capitalize on that. Sprawls out, gets Collins nearly in a pinning combination. Not able to finish it. Is able to roll around, working Looks on like the half. He's got a half in there. He's on his toes, he has him. There it is. Maneer getting a pin and breaking Caston's goose egg here in round four. Next up at 126, be Ashton Boyer facing off against Jordan Correct. This will easily be Boyer's hardest match of the night. Correct is such a great wrestler. No points for anybody yet. Big scramble there. Boyer ends up in front, sprawled. What Boyer can't let Correct do now is set up anything. He has to keep firing, 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 because if you let him set up, he's going to get exactly what he wants. There's Correct putting points on the board as he gets control there. Correct, trying to torque Boyer's shoulders over and get those blades towards the mat. And we're going to call an unsafe condition. Boyer down in referee's position as we restart. Boyer to his feet. Can't break free. Correct, tangles up a leg. Takes Boyer back down to the mat. He's working on threading those feet in. He's going to try to sprawl him forward from a re reverse mount, I think. Or just torque him over. So much pressure through Boyer's back there. Another potentially unsafe. Boyer's neck being torqued really hard. 21 seconds left in the period. At what moment is this a uh, point for the Comets? I don't know how many. I don't know how many cautions. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was two, but I could be wrong. Correct again. Trying to torque him over. North Miami defers. Comets choose neutral. Start this period out. 
Boyer with the shot. Grabbing Cor the leg. Correct, absorbs it. Correct ends up with the takedown points oh. there. Puts a leg in. Boyer has a hold of that wrist, not one to let it go for good reason. Mm -hmm. Looks like we had a call for locked hands. Boyer tries to sit out, correct, gets that inside thigh control. Oh, and, and he looks like he's going to splatle him here. I was just about to say, you can't let him get a leg in. At this point from here, it's even hard to tell whose legs are whose down there. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, Correct's eighth grade year, I wrestled him, and that's the exact move he put me in. He splatled me, and man... Not the same after that. <laughs> <laughs> correct, or not correct, excuse me. Boy, you're able to fight his way out of that. Very impressive. Boy, you're keeping a hold of that leg. Yep, trying to use his strength. As correct, works on that bundle. He's got him bundled over. Those shoulder blades are awful close. Boyer manages to bounce himself off of his back, but not a lot that, that Boyer can do here. Saved by the bell. Three back points awarded to correct. As we go into period three, correct starts in referee's position. Boyer goes tight waist to ankle, correct able to tumble out of it. Doesn't get the escape though. Boyer trying to work that half in. Correct able to spin around. We've got a potentially unsafe. Boyer working hard to break it down correct. Goes far knee, far ankle. Correct, trying to sit out. Correct now with two reversal points. Got the chicken wing in. Torquing Boyer over. This might be it. There's the pin. Hard fought match there. Looks like uh, North Miami's Braxton Raider will take the forfeit at 138. Oh, excuse me, I missed Caleb Evans. So we should have Caleb Evans taking a forfeit at 132. Braxton Raider getting the forfeit at 138. And then we'll be at 144 with Landon Schaefer facing off against Riley Kling.
Kling just sprawls his weight down. Yep. Runs a cow catcher. Mm -hmm. Rigney's in trouble. And there's the pen. Oh, quick. Next up, Gabe Burkett Raider facing off against Benson Eckert. Eckert appears to be struggling a little with his headgear at the far side of the mat. Now he's approaching the scorer's bench. Burger Raider again, quick for that shot. Ekro tying up his head. Sprawling down, getting those two points. Great move. Kind of a soft throw by there for Ekro. Mm -hmm. Now working to bundle up Burger Raider. Gabe fighting for all he's worth, trying to get a leg down and build a base. Tries to sit out. Gets the sit out, not able to get his hips free. Trying to slide his knee back up to build base. I don't think he realizes that his hips are loose to this right oh. side. He had that weight on his left leg and felt, you know, your brain then tells mm -hmm. you that, oh, I've got weight on me. Yeah. Ooh, Eckert's got him rolled. Burger Raider trying to to bridge out of that. And there's your pin. All right, last match of the round. Mm. Levi Martin facing off against Eli Lane. Both competitors back off looking for the shot opportunity. Almost mirroring each other's mm -hmm. movements. Martin, Martin with the gets leg. that takedown. Very quick. Again, Martin's such an explosive wrestler. Yep, doesn't let him breathe for a minute. Lane attempted that sit out. Martin now. Running that half. Left the half in there. He doesn't even need that leg anymore. And there's the pin. Levi Martin with the second victory of the for the cast of Comets in this round. And that will conclude round four. We'll be back for round five where Michigan City comes to the casting mat. Till then, you're watching Cast and Comets Wrestling here on RTC TV4. <laughs> I know.
All right, apologies for the late return. I was down at the scores table trying to get weight classes here as uh, Kane Finke falls in that 175 match to Tyler Deal from Michigan City. Here at 190, we're going to have Pete Duvall facing off against Thomas Farrell. Farrell? That might be Farrell. Fighting for arm control there. Farrell goes for a leg. Maybe that is Pharrell. What do you think, Drew? F-E-R-R-E-L-L. -L. I'm going to say Pharrell. I like that better. That sounds about right. Neither competitor feeling like they got enough control to really yep. run anything yet. Surely two different builds right here. Absolutely. Duvall trying that head bob and then go for the go for the shot. Didn't work out for him. I think he could easily drop down for a leg right here. No points yet with only 20 seconds left in the period. Clear out of bounds. 7.3 seconds left in the period. And that concludes the first yep. period here. Nothing much that period, just them figuring out each other, seeing what they're good at. Pharrell will start in referee's position here for period two. Builds his base, gets the escape point. Very aggressive head control right here by Pharrell. They had to push out of bounds. They'll reset in the center. Duvall going for that head control. Pharrell trying for arm control here. Oh, and Pharrell caught a finger to the eye, it looks like. Yep, definitely. crossing his feet on the on his stance. And I think they're so tight up at the top that Duvall's yeah. not noticing it. So Duvall definitely has the experience as a wrestler to take advantage of that. Throw by opportunity missed there by Pharrell. 30 seconds left in the second period. Go, 
14 seconds now. Locked up under 10 and we'll go out of bounds. 6.5 seconds left. It's gotta be a quick move or they might just might just wait it out. Locking back up as we count down. And there's one. Duvall chooses to start in referee's position. Looking for that escape point. Duvall set out unsuccessful. Duvall really needs some points on the board. There's a good sit out. Not able to escape with it though. And out of bounds. Duvall on his feet, back down. He just couldn't really get the separation the, from the hips right there. Of course, these competitors are so tired by this point of the day on their fifth match. Duvall to his feet. Trying to get rid of those underhooks. Matt return attempt. Switch. There's the escape, tying it up, one all. Drew, I could almost see this match going into sudden death overtime. Yep. Very good sit out to switch from Duvall right there to get his one. Realistically, one good shot could be what wins this particular match. Yep. Or one bad shot. Back to neutral in the center. 30 seconds to wrestle. Must have had his eye hit again. When I think that, uh, I think that the Michigan City coach is trying to get points there. He's like, "Hey, that's the second time that you've you've given caution for the for getting him in the eye." On the other hand, when you're going for head control, yep. it just it happens. It's gonna happen. There's a reason that we see inexperienced wrestlers shoot with their head down. Their, your natural instinct is to protect those eyes. Yep. Of course, we both understand how dangerous shooting with your head down is. Oh, it can put man. you in a bad spot. You gotta choose your spot, choose your side and shoot for it. I mean, honestly, in wrestling, if getting hit in the eye is just part of it. Ten seconds, it really can come down to whoever can score a point here. Locked Looks up, like two, one. Oh, shot. And we're now in sudden death overtime. Competitors at neutral. Duvall had that leg, couldn't keep a hold of it. Got that underhook in, not able to do anything with it. After six minutes of wrestling, these guys are tired.
Duvall now in referee's position after the first minute has expired. All he needs is a good escape. Pharrell knowing that, make sure to pin that ankle. Good sit out, there's the reversal, there's the escape. Points on the board. I'm pretty sure depending on how this ends, then uh, what's the school's name? They get a chance to pick uh, Tom Bop neutral. There's Michigan a shot. City. That's what it is. Yeah. And they called bottom. They're looking for that escape point. Duvall with that inside thigh control. One escape point goes out of bounds. They will reset to neutral. Duvall a little lucky there that it went out of bounds because mm -hmm. Pharrell very close to getting that reversal. And there's the takedown. As the clock expires, it will go by minor decision to Michigan City. Yep. Now at the 215 weight class, we got Brody Brewer facing off against Desmond Howard. Underway, Brewer locking up. Howard working on the throw by. Front headlock by Howard. Yeah, Brewer really needs to get his head out of there. Howard will get those two points. Gets back to his feet. Big Mav return by Howard. Yep. Trying to get that half in. Back up to his feet again. Looking for another Matt return. Gets it. Gave up the two on one. Going for the one-on-ones, but he, I feel like he skipped a step there. You know, the one where you, there you go. That's the one he was missing. One-on-one <laughs> -on -one when your opponent's still on his knees, not quite as effective. Yeah. Gets the half, Brewer back to his feet though, trying to pull that half off, and that'll be out of bounds. Need an explosion right here. Brewer the sit out. Ah. 
man, that'll end the first period. Desmond Howard leading two to nothing. Brewer in referee's position. Brewer sits out. Not quite able to get the escape. And puts himself in a bad position as he ends up facing Howard while still on the mat. Howard gets him rolled over. And there's the pin. Yep. Unfortunate right there. Next up at 285, we got Luke Hipsher facing off against Edgar Garcia. Again, the, the height disparity. It's almost comical here. Garcia quick yeah. on that front headlock. That's a big boy right there. Gets Hipsher rolled. Hipsher in a bad place. And all over. Yep. Around to the low end. Now, I wasn't sure what was going to happen because they have a 106, we don't, and we have 13, and they don't, but it looks like we are going to just trade forfeits here. Yep. The engagement here will take the forfeit at 120. And then at 126, we have Ashton Boyer facing off against Chase Fandre. You're looking for the shot. Nothing opening up. Fandre takes the shot. Oh, Boyer not able to sprawl. Still works out of the scramble. No one ends up on top. One minute gone here. Ashton gets a hold of a knee, not able to do anything with it. Yeah, right now it seems like he's just reaching down and grabbing it. If he'd fully commit with a good penetration step, he'd have it. And out of bounds. <clears throat> Boyer with a double leg. 
Looking for a place to put him down. Gets behind, gets his two points. Matt return. Needs to get his opponent back towards the middle of the mat. Gets that half, but if he rolls him that way, he's out of bounds. I don't know if he realizes where he is. And he oh, okay, he called out. And again, just a difference in officials yep. and with the mats. Being so close. Yeah, the, the uh, next mat over, basically the, the ring ends at the mat border. Yep. Boyer with that tight waist ankle trying to get Fandre broken down. Can't do it. Keeps a hold of the ankle though. And takes Fandre back to the mat right at the buzzer. Michigan City defers. Caston will choose neutral to start the second period. Fandre looking for that wrist control. Gives Boyer, Boyer the double leg. Boyer nearly had him in a pinning combination. Looks like he could have a cow catcher. Former cast and wrestler Jackson Music over there on the edge of the mat. Told him exactly what he needed to do right there. Boyer now working that head lever. And hey, they'll go out of bounds. Fandre quick to his feet. Boyer manages to keep an ankle though. Boyer working to turn Fandre. Keeps working that far knee, far ankle. There we go. He's got the turn. the half in. This puts Good. all his weight on him. Looks like it should be. Yep. There's the pin. After the 126 weight class, Caston still at a nine point deficit for team scores. Going into 144 where Landon Rigney will be facing off against Jonathan Schumade. Of course, I forgot about the two forfeits that uh, Caston's gonna give up here at the 132 and 138 mm -hmm. weight classes. Yep. Goes for the duck under. Not there. Tries again. Shimada just reaching for that leg. Gets a headlock. Very dangerous move. Yeah, Coach Evans, uh, typically when we go back and rewatch film, he, uh, he, I'm not going to say yells, but he's very passionate. Oh, yeah. 
about that not, should not be occurring. Yep, I've been told that all three years I've wrestled with him, or for him. But I think we're very close to a pin here. There it is. You know, though, there's a saying that if it's dumb and it works, <laughs> it's still dumb and you got lucky. Yep. At 150, Gabe Burkett Raider is going to take a four for, uh, maybe not. I think that they might have a 44 wrestling up. Okay. And unfortunately, because time was so cramped at, at the scorer's table, I wasn't able to get that. And I didn't have a chance to talk to their, to their coach. So this match would just be Burkett Raider versus Michigan City. He's taking on the whole city this time. <laughs> Burkett Raider aggressive into the match as always. Both wrestlers very lively, looking for their opponent to make a mistake. Market Raider going for the leg. Ends up getting two out of it. He's a little too high on him. His opponent attempting to sit out. He tried a risky, risky backyard move. Gives up the two reversal points there. Now in a bad position as the Michigan City wrestler starts working that half. Burger Raider able to peel it. Quite a lot of coaching happening from the Michigan mm -hmm. City quarter. Uh, makes me think this may be a very new wrestler yep. from Michigan City as well. Burger Raider struggling to build his base. The opponent gets the half. Does the power half. Worker Raider doing a good job of posting the leg, looking away, and sitting out. Exactly what you should do, defending that. Burger Raider able to get back to his knees, almost to his feet. Good mat return there by his opponent. And that will end period one in a tie at two all. Starting period two in neutral. Burger Raider working his way behind. Now in a good position for a mat return. And but his opponent headlock. gets that headlock in, drops him to the mat. He'll get two points for the takedown. And this could be the end for Burger Raider. Yep. With that far arm hooked under his opponent, there's very little he can do. In fact, I think all he could do at this point is a fast roll. Yep. He didn't think for of that fast enough. Next up at 157 is a forfeit, which will go to Levi Martin. And then I believe that they are going to take the forfeit at 165. Oh, never mind. Well, there was nobody listed, so this must be a 150 wrestling up. Yep. 
again, I, 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 thinking back now, there were two 150s listed. I wasn't sure who was going to wrestle 150 or... Well, oh wow, that's a fast bundle. Very quick, has a leg hooked. He's not going to be able to build anything. Yep. And there's a pin, just 24 seconds. And the round will conclude with a forfeit at 165, which gives round five on the center mat to Michigan City. And that will conclude the broadcast here of the Cast and Super 6. We want to thank you guys for joining us. Drew, thanks for coming up, throwing a headset on and uh, announcing with me. Yep, you're welcome, Blair. And look forward to seeing you take to the hardwood tonight as you guys face off against Frontier. So yep. good luck on that. Thank you. And with that, make sure that uh, you guys at home join us back again this evening uh, for the Caston Frontier game and before we go live with that we will be broadcasting the uh, Class 1A runner up ring ceremony for our, from our girls softball team back in the spring so make sure you tune in this evening and until then I'm Blair Zimmerman joined by Drew McGrew and yep. this is RTC TV4 yeah.